and welcome back to the second night of our Holiday Bible Club. We hope you enjoyed last night, but we think tonight is going to be even better. So are you sitting comfortably? Are you ready to listen to what God has to say to you? Okay, let's go and let's pray. P R A Y. Pray. God, we thank you for helping uh, all the boys and girls today, whatever they have done, and for keeping them safe. And we just ask you now as we come to listen and learn more about you through adventures through the rainforest. Might we grasp new truths? Might we learn new things about you? And as a result, might we love you and serve you in a new and brand new way? We just ask you for every teacher that you'll help them. In Jesus' name, Amen. Hello boys and girls. I hope you're ready to do our singing again. And we're going to start with, He made the stars to shine. And do you know, I learned that one when I was a little girl in Sunday school. So I know that one really well. But I do need some help with the actions. Now I know when we're singing, we're singing about God. So He, we're talking about God. So that's our sign for God. And then made and the stars and the rolling seas and the mountains and me. So let's have a go at singing, He made the stars to shine. He made the stars to shine, twinkle, twinkle. He made the rolling seas splash, splash. He made the mountains high, so high. And he made me bumpity, 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 bump. And that is why I love him. For me he bled and died. The Lord of all creation. Became the crucified. Very good singing. Let's try it again. He made the stars to shine, twinkle, twinkle. He made the rolling sea splash, splash. He made the mountains high, so high. And he made me bumpity, 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 bump. And that is why I love him, for me he bled and died. The Lord of all creation became the crucified. Well done boys and girls, that was lovely singing. And now we're going to sing wonderfully. He made me wonderfully. So he made me wonderfully. Okay, boys and girls, let's have a go at singing wonderfully. Wonderfully, wonderfully, God made me wonderfully. When I look, I can see I'm just fine. I'm designed perfectly, don't need change, no siree. This same face has been in style long long time. Ears that hear, they're so dear, nose to smell very well. And two eyes taking pictures constantly. Click, click, with my mouth I can feed, drink and sing, pray and read. Thank you God, you made me wonderfully. Now boys and girls, it's time for our memory verse. And tonight, our memory verse is found in Romans chapter 3 and verse 23. So can anybody tell me what part of the Bible the book of Romans is found in? That's right, it's the New Testament. And I was looking at it in my Bible and it says in Romans chapter 3 verse 23, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Now let's just have a wee think about what that means. All have sinned, so everybody has done sin, bad things. Sin is all the bad things. And all, even people that we think are really, really good people, even ministers, even people like Reverend Maxwell and Pastor Samuel or our Sunday school superintendent, Mr. Campbell, the Bible is saying all have sinned. And if it says it in the Bible, then it's God's word. 
and it's true because we know that God doesn't tell any lies. So all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So there's a standard or a mark that God expects us to reach and the mark is right up here. But none of us are good enough to get up here to where God wants us to be. We will never be good enough on our own. We all just come that wee bit short. So I want you to think about that, boys and girls, that none of us can be good enough on our own. We all need the Lord Jesus Christ. So we're going to have a go at saying our memory verse together. The Bible says in Romans chapter 3, verse 23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We're going to do it again. And this time we're going to do it a little bit louder. The Bible says in Romans chapter 3, verse 23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And this time we're going to say it a little bit quieter. The Bible says in Romans chapter 3, verse 23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Well done, boys and girls, and I hope you remember that none of us are good enough. We all need the Lord Jesus. Okay, boys and girls, it's time for our theme song. Who's the king of the jungle? that are around. Look, what is that? Loads of snakes here in the rainforest. Look, wow, they're all so different. Let's take a, let's take a wee look at some of them, will we? The first one is the green anaconda. Can you see it? The green anaconda. It's one of the biggest snakes in the world and it can grow up to 20 to 30 foot long that's very very long and can weigh 550 pounds that's a, that's a very very heavy weight and anacondas they're they're non-venomous and what they do is they they, they they're a long they're a long snake and they wrap themselves around a body and they squeeze it until the, the, the animal cannot they cannot cannot breathe 
The black mamba, secondly, is another snake. It can grow up to 14 foot and can live up to around about 11 years. It's one of the most venomous snakes in all of the world. It's really, really dangerous. And a black mamba snake is black, is, is a blue black colour and inside, inside of their mouth it is the same. And when they dis, when they're when they're threatened, one bite they bite their bite 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 the, the animals trying to attack them, and it can kill them within twenty minutes. And so the snakes in the rainforest can be so deadly, and that's why we need to keep looking out everywhere for the snakes in the rainforest. But do you know there's also snakes that are mentioned in God's word, the Bible. Yesterday we learned all about creation and how God made everything. He made the world, he made the sun, he made the stars. And after he made Adam and Eve, he put them into a garden called the Garden of Eden. And he put Adam and Eve in charge of all of the animals and let them eat everything in the garden. But there was one tree and it was called the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And God told them that they were not allowed to eat of that tree. Now we would think it should be, should have been easy for Adam and Eve to have listened to God's command. They could do whatever they wanted, but just one tree they were not allowed to touch. But let's find out what they done. We're going to read in our Bible from the very first book in the Bible, Genesis chapter 3. And it says, Yea, has God said, this is the devil saying to Adam and Eve, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And Eve turned around and to see a snake was talking to her. A sneaky snake, just like the snakes we saw in the rainforest. And so let's get the picture again. Adam and Eve, they're in a rainforest. There's one tree they cannot touch. And a snake comes along. And the snake says to them, Has God really said that you shouldn't eat of that tree? In other words, the snake says, said to them, that the snake said to them, if you, if you eat of that tree, the tree of good and knowledge, you'll become just like God. You will know what is good and what is evil. And Eve thought for a minute, if I take of this tree, I could become like God. And Eve looked at the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, and it looked so, so tasty. Maybe it was a juicy apple or a peach or even an orange. And she thought, I would just love to taste that. I would just love to eat that. She thought, I would just love to be like God. I would love to be so powerful and wise. And you know what she decided to do? She believed the lies of the snake and, and ate the fruit and then gave some to Adam. And as soon as she ate of, of that piece of fruit she knew something was wrong the bible tells us that their eyes were opened and they saw that they were naked and so what they done was they they hurried around the garden they made clothes out of leaves but they knew in their heart they knew in their mind that they had disobeyed god they had let god down and suddenly there, there was a voice in the garden and what did they do they tried to hide from god but can I say, boys and girls, young people, we cannot hide from God. God is everywhere. God sees you even right now. God asked Adam and Eve, where are they? Adam told God that he was afraid. He hid himself because he was afraid. And God asked Adam if he had ate from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Do you know what Adam? Adam blamed Eve. And then Eve blamed the snake for telling her lies. You see, the snake, who was the snake? The snake was the devil. Disguised so he could trick Adam and Eve into disobeying God. This was the first ever sin recorded in the Bible. This sin meant that that's why there is now sickness and sadness. That's why all of us are, are born with this condition called sin. Sin has destroyed the perfect world that God created for Adam and Eve. And so what God done was he told Adam and Eve to leave the garden. He, he took them out of the garden. But this snake, this snake 
had tricked Adam and Eve. What had happened? They had lost everything because of sin. You know, the first sin is the reason why each of us are born with sin. This sin is, is in each one of us the day that you were born. And there's only one way to get rid of that sin. That is through Jesus, God's son. And he went to a cross and came back to, back to life on the third day. He died, rose again because he loved each one of us. He loved each one of us so much that he took that sin that you were born with, all those bad things you've done, and he didn't want you to be punished, and he paid for your sin on a cross. And so the only way that you can have your sin forgiven is to ask Jesus to take it away. I wonder, would you do that? Would you do that this evening? You see, we're all, we're all born with this, we could say, a, a big load of sin on this hand. Whenever we ask Jesus to take away our sin, Jesus, he takes that sin away and he forgets about it. And we're no longer sinners, but we're made right in the, in the eyes of God. But you know, even this snake, the snake still comes to us and tells us lies every day. He tells us that we don't need to ask Jesus to forgive us of our sins. He tells us that we can just live whatever way we want. He tells us that God isn't real he tells us that this Bible is only just a book of stories. He tells us to disobey our parents. He tells us to steal and to tell lies. He tells us all of these things and so that we will disobey God and make him sad. But on the flip side, when we ask Jesus to come into our lives and forgive us for our sins, he helps us to say no to the devil, to live a life that's pleasing to God, to do the right thing and not the wrong thing, to obey our parents, and not say bad things. So just like when we walk through the forest, we need to keep our eyes open for any sneaky snakes that are dangerous. We need to keep our eyes open every day and ask God to help us not to listen to the devil's lies, but to trust God and he will help you. And I want to say again to you young people that you need Jesus in your life. You need him to take away your sin if you're ever to get to heaven. I wonder... This evening, would you say, Jesus, I'm sorry for my sins. Jesus, I ask you to take my sin away. Jesus, I ask you that you will come into my life and that you will help me to live for you every single day. If you do this, the Bible says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Why don't you do that today? Why don't you know forgiveness of sin why don't you know that peace that one day you'll go home to heaven to live with God let's just pray father thank you for every young person here that's listening this evening and I pray for those that have still got sin in their hearts have never asked you into their lives that even today they might ask you to be their savior to take away their sin father you're you're at you're at their side right now and they can ask you into their lives at this very moment. We pray that you will help them. We also pray for those that are Christians, that you will help them to, to live lives that make God happy, that may live, live lives that make God glad, that they'll obey their parents, that they will obey God's word, that they will spend time with you. Just be with us. Help us in the rest of the week. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much for listening this evening. God bless you. All right, boys and girls, are you ready for our quiz tonight? I hope you were listening really well and that you'll be able to answer these questions. So starting with the four to seven year olds, what animal did we see in the rainforest today? Question two, who spoke to Eve? Question three, who did the snake tell Eve she could be like? Question four, was the snake telling the truth? Question five, who was the snake? Question six, who did Adam and Eve disobey? And question seven, this was the first sin. Who else has sinned? in their lives.
9 or the 8 to 11 year olds, are you ready for your quiz? I hope you were listening really well to question 1. What is the biggest snake in the world called? Question 2. Adam and Eve lived in the garden of fill in the blank. Question 3. What did you call the tree that they were not allowed to eat from? And question 4. What did the snake tell Eve? Question 5. What did Eve do? Question 6. What did Adam and Eve do when they saw they were naked? Question 7. Why were Adam and Eve afraid? Question 8. What came into the world after the first sin? And question 9. Because of this first sin, who else has sinned in their lives? So that's our quiz for tonight, boys and girls. Fill in your workbooks and send them in. So for today's craft, we are going to make a chicken because we learned about one in our story. So I need everybody to print out their chicken template from their workbook. And once they have it printed out, I want you to colour it in the same way I have. So this is the body, the wing and the tail. So they all need to be coloured in a black. And then this wee bit is their belly. Leave it white. And this is their uh, beak and their eye and the wee bit that goes around the eye and colour them all the same colour as mine and we'll make our token. So once we have this done, all coloured in, then we can start cutting them out. And once we cut them out, we'll have all of our pieces. So to put it together, we can start with the branch that the token is going to sit on. And then we get our three leaves. Now with our biggest one, so put the smallest one, and then the middle one, and then the very big one along the top. And once we have them stuck on, then we can start making our token. So our next part is we can put on the token's feet on the branch. And then we can get the body and we can stick its belly onto the body. And then you can stick your wee bit of eye on. And then you can stick it down here on top of its feet. And then stick on its beak and its eye. And finally, its tail and its wing. And once you have it all stuck on, you'll have your token all stuck and ready to go. And make sure to get your colourful paper to stick it all onto so that it'll all stay together. Make sure to send your completed craft into the Dungannon IMC Facebook page or on their email address and you could see your craft in the Thursday night video of Holiday Bible Club. You also could be in with a chance of winning a prize for those who put loads of effort into their crafts. So don't miss out and get your crafts sent in so we can see them. Sandy, what do you do? Mm. Mm, nothing. Sandy, are you eating something? Mm, mm, no. Sandy, it certainly sounds like you're eating something. Do you think he sounds like he's eating something? I do. You know, Sandy, are you eating something? Mm. Sandy, open your mouth. <gasps> Sandy, I see a sweet in there. Oh, Sandy, did I tell you not to take one of those sweets? Yeah, and you took one? And then, what did you do? You told a lie? Sandy, do you know what those things are? Mm, well, it was only one sweet. I know, but then that means that we won't have enough to make our buns. Oh, well, but, but it wasn't, it wasn't really, it wasn't, it was only a wee one. Uh, yes, it might only have been a wee one, Sandy, but I told you not to do it. And, and then you tried to pretend that you didn't do it and that was a lie. Do you know what those things are? Yeah, I was listening today. That's sin. That is. It is sin. Even though it's only a little thing, it's still sin. And, well, God doesn't like sin, does he? No, he doesn't. 
I'm sorry. Well, glad, Sandy, I'm really glad that you're sorry. Do you know what I'm really glad about? I'm really glad that even though we do make mistakes, and even though we do do some bad behaviours and, and, and sin, that God still loves us. And that God sent Jesus to take away those sins so that we don't have to be punished for them. <gasps> yeah. Oh, I'm so glad that Jesus came. I'm so glad that Jesus came too. It's sin is sin spoiled the whole world, isn't it? Yeah, it made things not nice, it made things really bad. It really wasn't wasn't good. No, it's not. And that's why we have some things in our world like like weeds and sickness and all of those kind of things. That's why we have all those because Adam and Eve sinned. Yeah, we heard about that. Adam and Eve disobeyed God. They didn't do what he said. Just like he disobeyed me and, and didn't do what I said, Sandy. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. And, and I'll try really hard not to do it again. Well, do you know what, Sandy? We can try really hard ourselves, but we will make mistakes. But the one person that can take away all of those mistakes and... Um, can, can help us every day to live like him is Jesus. If we ask him to come into our hearts and take them away, he will do that. <gasps> wow, Jesus, Jesus would do that for us. He would, Sandy. And you know, I think we might hear even more about that tomorrow. You come back and hear tomorrow more about what Jesus has done for us and, and why he did it. Because he loves us. <gasps> Wow, well, I'm coming back. I want to see everybody, and I want to come back and hear some more. Okay, Sandy, that'll be really good. Say bye-bye to the boys and girls now. Bye. Bye.